All right, people, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another First Reviews reaction video, and it's time to take a look at the first reviews for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. One! So, we are uh, we are here to take a look at this really high Rotten Tomato score. Uh, and it's kind of pointless. We already know it's going to be, like, in the 90s. Uh, if it's not, I'll be very surprised. Um, the last three movies have all been in the 90s. Um, and, uh, honestly... I expect the last two to be in the 90s, meaning this and the next one. I think they are going to continue the, the franchise, but originally they were saying Dead Reckoning was going to be it. Um, one and two, I mean. Uh, but I think recently uh, Christopher McQuarrie was just like, nah, we're going to do more. I was like, all right. Uh, this movie had a huge budget, by the way. I didn't realize uh, it has like a, almost a $300 million budget just for this one part. I hope it does well. I mean, I, I, after like Top Gun and like even the Mission Impossible movie before Fallout... Um, I, I just think, I think Tom Cruise is, is still, a, he was always a box office draw, but he might be a more box, he, he might be more of a box office draw now than he ever has been. So same thing with like Keanu Reeves, like, you know, like, Hey, they're both like in their six, they're like 60 or about to be 60 or I think Tom Cruise is 61 now. Um, I think Keanu just turned 60 maybe, or he's about to turn 60. Um, both of them at the top of their game. I would even dare say Keanu is way more. Actually, I would, I would, I would even dare. I would, I would say this is a fact that Keanu Reeves is probably more popular now than he ever has been, even with The Matrix or Point Break or whatever that. Um, like people, when you say Keanu Reeves, you go, oh, I love Keanu Reeves. Like you know, whatever. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna guess ninety five percent. Like, there was early, like, reactions that came out of wherever the fuck they saw it. And everybody was like, oh my god, this is the best one. Which I hear about every single one. Um, four was the best one until five, and then until six, and now until seven. Um, I think four is still the best one, personally. I just rewatched it not too long ago. That movie is so fucking good. Um, six is definitely the second best. And then third best would be probably Rogue Nation. Then three, then one, then two. That's it. that's in the order. I'll probably rank them after uh, Dead Reckoning Part One comes out. I do need to watch some of them again. Though. I did watch four not too long ago, like maybe maybe a couple a few months ago. Maybe I don't know. I just put it on. I was like, yeah. Anyway, let's go. Three, two, one. Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, I don't want to see. It. I don't want to see your little synopsis. Okay, so is it here? It's not here. All right, so we can do this. Mission, there, no, that's part two, what the fuck, let's see what Mission Impossible part two has, Dead. there it is, alright, 95% coming up, oh, <laughs> I already has a certified fresh, holy shit, alright, and what's the average rating, alright, that's pretty good, I thought it was gonna be a little higher, honestly, but that was pretty good, eight, eight out of ten, <laughs> it's pretty good that's <laughs> pretty pretty good all right with world threatening stakes and epic set pieces to match that massive title mission possible dead reckoning part one proves that this is still a franchise you should ex choose to accept and you're goddamn right dude after fallout come on now the youtube effect um i'll tell you about the youtube effect uh, all right let's uh yeah you know let's do let's do the rotten let's be a little negative first okay two and a three all right uh the plot borrows from westworld does it it aims for cerebral but ends up coming out like half-baked christopher nolan brain fart what are we talking about the same movie it feels like a movie that's been assembled by an intentive an intentive monkey or a luckless studio intern who was handed a bucket of half-completed rushes and told, go make a COVID-beating blockbuster out of that. COVID-beating? What the fuck are you talking about? What? COVID-beating? Because people are afraid their movies are going to bomb because of COVID? Is that the excuse that's happening still? Because nobody saw The Flash and Indiana Jones and all these fucking movies that bombed is because of COVID? You know, a thing that people aren't worried about it at all really anymore <laughs> sure I, 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 like uh, tell me about like the mario movie which was a family movie too if anybody was going to be worried about covid it'd be people with families um tell me about uh guardians of galaxy 3 tell me about um 
What's the other one that did well? Uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Tell me all these. Why, why those do well? Huh? I just got lucky. Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, Macquarie puts enough... You know, let's go. All cracks. Here we go. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Now it's a different one. Whatever. Uh, reasonably thrilling. Cruise is typically terrific. Situation-specific gags and one-liners merely pop up during scenes when the tension is mounting and the action is intense, just so you don't make the mistake of taking the spectacle too seriously. Okay. Sounds like an MCU movie. Man. First rate entertainment that flaunt, except this one's probably actually going to be funny. Because, you know, the Mission Impossible humor, the humor that's in these movies, very underrated. Like, I always go back to that part in Rogue Nation where, like, he, he, uh, uh, Ethan just, like, comes back from being dead. He's like, uh, uh, and he runs out. And he's like, oh, uh, he finds a car and he, like, tries to do, like, the cool slide over the car to get to the driver's seat. And he just, like, just <laughs> and falls over. It's so good. I fucking died in my theater with them because they're playing the cool like the mission boss like dun, 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 and he just fucking falls over. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, first rate entertainment that flaunts Paramount's enormous investment. Good, it should. McQuarrie, they probably saw the box office numbers for the last one and the fucking critical ratings. I'm like, and they're like, whoo! <laughs> they're like, whoo! Shit, motherfucker! <laughs> McGuire puts enough blood, bloody crunch into the action to dispel any suggestions of creeping comic decadence. Top flight supporting performances help. Cool. This is still probably the only franchise today. Save for maybe James Cameron's Avatar that maintains a 300 plus million dollar budget and you can see every penny on screen. I think it was 290. I want to say it was a 290 budget, but I, maybe he's also counting the marketing, maybe. Or maybe, maybe it is over 300. I guess sworn recently I saw it said 290. Which is a little bit less than indie, and I have a feeling it's going to be... Dude, the Mission Impossible movies at this point are probably going to be better Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> like, hey, when Uncharted is as good as your Indiana Jones movie, you know you fucked up. Anyway, I'm talking about the Uncharted movie. Which I know some people are like, no. But like, if you've never played an, indie, uh, an Uncharted game, then that is probably just as good as Indiana Jones, the new one. It, I, I don't understand how people can like the new Indiana Jones. That's fine if you do. I just don't understand it. Like, I, I watch it, I'm like, this is the most dull shit. How anybody could say, this is like the original three, is, is beyond me. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. I will take Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and it's stupid bullshit any day over this boring fucking trite with unlikable characters and boring fucking... Um, everything just everything's boring in that movie i was so fucking dull dulled out i was like i was like hoping it would be a surprise because i saw the reviews were a little bit like slightly better than they were i was like okay maybe i'll maybe i'll at least enjoy myself a little bit no the beginning i enjoyed kind of but that, that was about it all of Cruz's female co-stars bring something different and valuable to mission impossible okay what the fuck does that have to do with anything <laughs> I gotta talk about women. I gotta talk about them. That's a weird one to like. I mean, that's not a weird thing to mention in your review, but it's a weird thing to have as your consensus. You know what I mean? I had to look up the. I mean, I had to like think up the word. Setting aside whatever quibbles I have about the tona tonality and plotting, Macquarie and Cruz remain showmen, committed to giving audiences a spectacle that demands to be seen in the theater. Okay. Though the bulk of the film is one protracted chase after another, sounds good to me. Perhaps plagued by the gnawing sense that a cliffhanger is and a cliffhanger ending is looming. The adventure is so keenly fashioned that it's consistently entertaining throughout. I had the same feel. At least this one's called Part One. I had the same problem with both Spider Verse and Dune, where it's just like, first of all, both of them didn't call themselves Part One, and also. Like, now Dune calls itself Part 1, but when it was coming out, it was just called Dune. It was Dune. Dune, baby, Dune. Um, and it de well, Dune definitely ends out of nowhere. I, I don't think Spider-Verse is that big of a cliffhanger. They're building it up. They're fucking playing the score. It's, like, obviously about to end. It was so obvious it was about to end. So it was really confusing why everybody in the theater was like, What? It ended? I'm like, it's so obvious. It was building up. It was so it was building what do you think it was building up to for them to do what? Uh all right, now let's let's end this entire story right now in the next two minutes. I don't, I don't understand. Anyway. The bulk of the film is one of, yeah, right, first class action film, but not a high new high of the series for me it needs some time to get going doesn't quite have the intensity and sheer power of its predecessor but if there's a second part coming why not put a bigger cliffhanger at the end so he's his problem was 
there isn't a big cliffhanger. I'm okay with that. I don't mind that. I I, I trust them. I just don't want. I don't. I trust them with the the story. The story of the Mission Possible movies are simple, but they're effective. They're very very well told too. Uh, Tom Cruise once again proves he could deliver a thrilling blockbuster movie that has uh, all the heart, action, and comedy. Uh, and comedy audiences go to the cinema to experience. There you go. Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is just incredibly fun. It feels half its length and contains, uh, uh, oh no, enough memorable action sequences for some entire franchises. Oh, here's Grace floating her head in. Uh, impossibly, impossibly, Cruz keeps topping himself. With the help of McQuarrie, this, <laughs> this is the best entry yet in a very good franchise. The movie is thrilling from beginning to end and manages to be both timeless and and quite modern. A must for spy fans and action fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, throw <laughs> a throwback to an era when summer movies presented something distinct from what studios produced for the other nine months of the year. It, that's true. Now we don't we don't get summer movies anymore, really. I mean, they're they're here, obviously, but we get them all year long, really. I mean, look look at earlier this year. You know, we had like John Wick, we had um, uh, uh, the shitty Marvel movie was uh, Ant-Man. We got we had, like, those are movies that probably should have been summer movies, but they weren't. They were fucking early movies. And honestly, I wish at least John Wick was, uh, Ant-Man sucked. That that was garbage. I'm glad I didn't come out in J June or July or whatever. Um, but I think John Wick would have been a great summer. Like, especially now after like fucking so many disappointments. Like, imagine if John Wick also came out in July who July will be a good ass month. Like, I imagine it came out this week. You know, I know Insidious comes out, but besides that, there's nothing else big. No one's seeing Indiana Jones. I don't even worry about that. Um, and then, and then next week get to see Mission Impossible, and then the week after that get to see both Barbie and Oppenheimer. That's a fucking treat, baby. God damn. And they all would have had a week in between each other. It would have been fine. John Wick would have done fine. Different type of action movies and stuff. God, that would have been good. God, I, I hey, I know some people are like, oh, too many movies. I, shit, I watch a two and a half hour movie once a week. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's too many games. That's the problem. I'm looking at my fucking PlayStation and my Xbox. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I just, I can't. Every time I think about playing something in my backlog, I'm just like, I'm not. And you know how about I just don't play anything right now? You ever think of that? Uh, maintains the impossibly high standard set by the last three films and the exciting franchise that takes bold new steps for the franchise while still delivering the thrills in the franchise. In the franchise. Um, we an uninspiring human villain. Oh, really? All the early reviews I heard were like, they were they were very impressed by the villain. I forgot the actor's name. You see him in the trailers a couple times. Uh, and lack of memorable spy tech. This, uh, yeah, that is my favorite stuff, to be fair. If that's true, that's upsetting. That it didn't. There wasn't a lot of that in Fallout. I will say there was some, but not a lot. But in fucking Ghost Protocol, dude, the 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 that's the fourth one, by the way. Uh, the the beginning of that movie. When they're like going into the hall and they have like the 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 screen with the fucking camera that makes it and it tracks the eyes to make it look like the hall is fine, so good. And then like even the gloves they sticks to climb up the 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 building, so good. I love that all all the shit like fucks up. You know, I mean it's high tech, but it's also like it's so high tech. It's it's there's no way it's going to function that long. Like there's no way anything that, like this could actually exist in this world. So what they decided to do and make it so that it always fucks up. And then Ethan has to actually use skill to get out of that situation, which I love. I think that's such a great idea. All right, cool. You have all these gadgets and stuff, but the guy, the man using the gadgets, that's the guy that actually makes it so that they succeed. Not just the cool gadget, you know, the cool gadget breaks and then his ass has to climb up the rest and use a fucking like a, a hosed uh, spool thing to fucking, run down it and then he has to like jump off the thing to land back into the window jeremy renner catches him which i don't know what the fuck happened to him. i mean i know what happened to him in real life but i'm talking about i don't know what happened to him in these movies they just completely gave up on that i guess he was barely in rogue nation yeah I mean, he was but he didn't do anything um whatever uh, Ch Ch Cruz and McQuarrie are determined to make a rocket ride, crafting a delightfully propulsive and suspenseful movie. It's a compelling continuation of the franchise that teases enough about the next entry and retains enough character focus to remain compelling on a personal level. It'll probably be the same thing like Rogue Nation was to, like, 
uh, Fallout. You know, like, the main villain from Rogue Nation came back. He had a lot to do with the plot, obviously, and they had references to Rogue Nation. It's going to be like that. I don't know why they called it Part 1, Part 2. They should call it Dead Reckoning and then something else. Kind of like what the Spider-Man movies did. Uh, there's no most of works, but it feels like a franchise that's winding down. Here's hoping a th few thrills have been saved for Part 2. Motherfucker drove off a goddamn cliff. I don't know. What, what did he do? Uh, Dead Reckoning Part 1 doesn't just r rack up the miles in style. Like so many globe trying thrillers and big screen tourist brochures, it's also a gleaming advertisement for Hollywood itself. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the good part of Hollywood, there's not much. Uh, see it on the biggest screen you can find! Uh, action that's both so stunningly executed and strikingly classical in its approach. Sick. I mean, fuck off, Kevin. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. I'm trying to have a fun, positive time and you're ruining it with your splat. Fuck out of here. I reckon Dead Reckoning is one of the best movies of our so-called, so far lacking summer. Yeah, this summer has been shit. Not for games, though. Usually games quiet down for uh, summer, but no, that's definitely not the case. I mean, this month it's going to quiet down a little bit. We have Pikmin that's, and, and Exo Primal. That's about it. There's like, probably a couple other things I'm forgetting right now, but August, it'll pick back up again. Got Armored Core. You got, um, uh, a couple other things I can't remember now. I just remember Armor Core was. Oh, Mark Duplass. This is a Duplass Brothers movie? No. Just one Duplass. One Duplass. Hold the mayo. Alright, so there you go. That's. Oh, we have to go to Metacritic. Actually, shit. Excuse me. Part of my does. Check out my background. I got some bottles. I got a Steam Deck. I was using the Steam Deck. That's unsup. I mean, that's surprising for me because I never, ever used the Steam Deck. All right. Okay, 82. I will take that. <laughs> Wait, no, let's laugh at it. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, big, small. Oh, oh they made a Wham movie? All right. Or show or documentary? Uh, uh, all right. Oh, Angela Bassett's back. Okay. Uh, this guy's time bombs, runaways, trains, crews, his director, Christopher McQuarrie, and the collaborators are very consciously working in a century-old tradition here, perhaps to show the business and art of stunning audiences can, if we choose, be much the same now as it ever was. Mission Impossible, there's one big, there isn't a perfect movie, there's one big sum of that's sure to be divisive, but it's damn near close. Ooh. Oh, I wonder what it is. Oh, I think I know what it is. Because they're even teasing in the trailer. I'm not going to say what it is. Just in case. It, you know, I will. I'll, I'll say I'll say someone's going to die. And I think it's going to be divisive because... Wait, Nicholas Holt's in it? What the fuck? I didn't know that. Um, Simon Pegg's in it. Tom Cruise is in it? What the fuck? I'm just kidding. I love Shea Wiggum. That's, that's, that's going to be the part. Oh, is he on the poster? I don't think so. I don't see him. That sucks. He's probably not gonna have a very big role in. That's sad. Carrie Elways is it? What the fuck? Oh, I thought it said Chris Parnell. I was like, what? That's the actor's name, Isa Morales. That's the guy that Isa. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, Henry Severni, of course, he comes back. Um, anyway, whatever. Uh, someone's gonna die. Let me just say it's gonna be. Uh, They were making it kind of obvious there. If that happens, that'd be kind of annoying. And now make it so that like Tom or uh, Ethan Hunt really has like he really wants to finish it. That's why he looks so angry in some of the trailers. <clears throat> like when when Henry uh, Severny's talking to him, he's just like he's like really upset. <laughs> He's like, mm -mm, I don't like you. <laughs> I'm sad. Anyway, I guess we'll find out in a week. So there you go. That's it. Comes out this next week. This today. Or the next week. The next this week, but next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? It comes out Wednesday next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> hey, that's it. Bye. Well, there is a new. There supposedly Dead Reckoning Part Two is coming out next year, so I'm sure they'll release it on Wednesday also. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you tonight. Wait, why is it coming out on Wednesday next week? Is there a holiday next week also? Or are they just like, fuck it, let's release it on Wednesday, because why not? 
I'm okay with that. Anyway, that's it. Bye.